what's up tutorial watcher today i got something just for you so someone commented on one of my previous videos asking for a waterfall tutorial and i was like yeah i know of a quite easy way to make a waterfall so i'm going to do that right now because everyone knows that i like my upside down waterfalls like i like my subscriber count which would be preferably rising so hit that subscribe button after all my dream of you subscribing to my youtube channel is just one click away look at this turkey he believes you subscribed but does his tommy gun all jokes aside now um, just note that this tutorial assumes that you have some little bit of basic blender and unity knowledge so let's continue so i jumped into blender and started modeling a water bottle and uh, well there we have it water that falls <laughs> Just okay but in all seriousness now uh, the process of making a waterfall is quite simple all you need is some rocks donut and uh, yeah because well as we all remember from high school calculus donut plus rocks equals waterfall root squared so to start off we start with an empty scene in blender and delete everything yes even the default cube then we add a torus rotate it 90 degrees around the y-axis and go into the modifiers tab add subdivision surface modifier add displacement modifier create a new texture go into the textures tab with the texture selected change it to clouds and then Go into the modifiers tab again and scale the strength to something that looks kind of like this. Then apply all modifiers. Go into the objects tab and select smooth shading. That's it for our donut part. Then create a circle. Go into edit mode, select all the vertices and press F to fill. Go out of edit mode and scale it up a bit. Move to the left, scale it down a bit. This is our dam in which the water falls. Then we add an icosphere. Go into the modifiers tab and add a displacement modifier. Create a new texture. Go into the textures tab with this texture selected and change it to Voronoi. And well, that, that kind of looks like a rock. Go into the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier if you want and apply all modifiers. If you want, you can also add a decimate modifier and scale it down a bit. This is if you feel that the rock has too many polygons. This basically drops the polygon count to make it look more low poly. Then just duplicate this rock all over the place. This is like the edge of the dam. And then scale and rotate them all randomly because when they all get duplicated they all look the same but when you're done scaling and randomizing they all look different if you know which movie this is a reference to please drop it down below in the youtube comment section i would really appreciate that add plane move it up a bit scale it on the x-axis and move it a bit on the y this is like the river flowing in. Move the rocks up to hide the horribly ugly edges. And duplicate another rock to just close it up behind the waterfall. And then just make sure that all the water parts are covered by rocks on their edges. And now that everything is nice and tight, we can add some materials. Add a blue material to all the water parts. Copy that material to all the water parts. <laughs> Add a brown material to a rock and copy it to all the rocks. And yeah, that, that's about it. That's what we need. So when I do that, you can kind of see how this is going to be working in Unity. Now open up the Unity Hub and create a new project. I called mine Waterfall Tut. When the new project opens, create a new folder under the Assets folder and call it Blender Models. In this folder, our Blender model will be stored. Go 
go back into Blender and select Save As. Navigate to your Unity project folder and go into the Assets directory. And then in Blender Models, save your Blender model. Back in Unity, you will now see the model appear in the Blender Models folder. If it doesn't appear immediately, minimize and maximize your Unity project window again and it might take some time to load. Then drag the model into your scene. If you want, you can rotate the directional light to fall better on the waterfall part. Inside the waterfall object, you can locate the torus, or the donut part. And you can see when I rotate it like this, it starts to look like waterfalling. So, we're going to write a script to do that in a moment. So, create a new folder under Assets and call it Scripts. In the Scripts folder, create a new c -sharp script and call it waterfall script. Double-click it to open it in your code editor. I'm using Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, write the following line of code. Transform dot rotate vector3 dot forward comma time.delta time times minus 50. You can also store the minus 50 in a public variable as you can change. This would be the speed at which the waterfall rotates, but then it won't be one single line of code anymore. Press Ctrl S to save the script. Go back into your Unity editor window and select the torus. Press Add Component and select the waterfall script. When we play the game, we can now see our waterfall falling. Create a new folder under your Assets folder and name it Materials. Go into the Materials folder and create a new material. Name it Watermat. Change its color to light blue and bump up the metallic and smoothness values and drop it onto all the water parts. You can also move the rocks a bit to better hide some of the edges that still sticks out and you can also try to move up the water plane of the river because the higher it is, the better it transitions into the waterfall part. There, it looks a bit better now. Next thing we need is some particles, but remember to regularly save your project. Select the waterfall and create an empty object underneath of it. Move it to the base of the waterfall. Name it Particles. Add component Particle System. And the moment is rotated wrong, so just play with the rotation values until you get it so that it emits the particles upwards. Then scale it down a bit. Drop its start lifetime until it looks something like this. Go into the shape and increase the angle of the cone. Now go into the renderer and select mesh on the render mode. Then select the sphere as the mesh. Go into the materials folder and create a new material. Call it bubbles mat and we'll leave it white for now. Go back into the particle system and drop it into the render material. Increase the start size of the particle system and move it as desired. Enable size over lifetime and select the graph. Add a new key. 
If you don't see the graph, you can just drag the black bar upwards in the editor and then shape the graph something like this. Go into emission and bump up the amount of particles generated over time to 20. You can drop down the start speed a little bit as well. Now when we play the scene, it looks quite a bit more realistic. So you might be asking me, what if you want a taller waterfall that doesn't necessarily follow the radius of the torus? Well, that is easy. Create a new empty object. Drag it to be a child of the torus and zero out its transform. And rename it as waterfall parent. So in the end we want to put the torus as a child of this object. But you will notice that you cannot just drag it around immediately. So you first need to unpack the prefab. Then you can drag the torus in as a child of this new object. And when you run the game again, you will see that by scaling this parent, you can shape your waterfall as desired. And yes, that's it for now. Uh, you will notice that the video in the beginning also had some trees and better post-processing. But that is another tutorial in its own right. So if you would like to see a tutorial on making low poly scenes look better um, regarding post-processing and those type of stuff, uh, just drop it in the comment section and I'll make a tutorial about that. Thanks for watching.